All right, so let's pray. Let's ask the Lord to be with us this morning as we start. Lord, Father God in heaven, we thank you. Thank you that you love us more than our sin. Thank you that you sent Jesus, your one and only son, to die on the cross for our sins. And thank you, Jesus, that you who knew no sin, you came as the Lamb of God, took our sin upon yourself. You became our sin. You paid the price for our sin. You took the wrath of the Father. We're so thankful. We are so thankful that you died for us. You defeated the power of sin in our lives, Lord, on that cross. And thank you that you walked out of that grave on the third day. What a blessing, raising from the dead and defeating the power of death in our lives. Yes, you've made us born again, children of living God. Our name's written in the book of life for eternity. You defeated the power of sin and death in our lives. Help us to realize that it is you, Christ in us, the hope of glory, that you, you're the one, and you've given us your spirit. We pray today in Jesus' name, amen. So today, guys, um, I'm pretty excited about uh, the message. I've been uh, thinking about it and praying about it and preparing for it. I sent you an email, and uh, the, um, it stated at the top, it was Christ in you, the hope of glory, which is in Colossians 1.27b. Uh, it's uh, amazing, this wonderful statement that really resonates the truth of the Word of God from the very beginning to the end, for it's Christ in you, the hope of glory. All through the Bible, it talks about how God says, for all those who fear him, that means all those who seek him with a sincere, a humble, and contrite heart, knowing that they need to come to their creator God, that, that, it, that God would provide. He'd provide a path. He'd provide a way. His mercy and grace would be everything, everything. And all that comes to this, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Now, notice what it says, hope, Christ in you, the hope of glory. That means hope. Hope is to look forward to something that is in the future, something good, something wonderful in the future. Hope is not, at this moment, you're, you're, you're experiencing whatever you have at this moment. Hope is not in the past, because you already know it, but hope is always looking forward to something good. And it's Christ in you the hope of glory, because Christ is in you, because he's given you his Holy Spirit. First and second uh, Ephesians talk about that. The minute we come to Christ, the minute we open our heart, the minute that we, we believe in, the, in, in God as our, as our Lord and Savior with the faith that he gives us, that we respond to, that the Holy Spirit is given to us as a guarantee, as a, as a deposit, as an earnest deposit for us for eternity, so that now we have hope. In other words, we are we are in Christ, but we're still here alive on the earth, and we need to deal with our everyday thing. Now, the book of Romans and uh, the seventh chapter and many other places in the Bible, it talks about how we have this flesh, and we have these desires, and we, we are, we're in a conflict every day. It talks about this in Romans chapter 8, whether we live by the Spirit or live by the flesh. It's a constant battle. Paul talks about it in Romans 7. He says, there's all kinds of things going on in me. I'm constantly not doing what I really want to do, and I want to do this, and I'm doing that. But I know, praise God, right at the end, right as you go into chapter 8 of Romans, but in Christ, I know that I'm, I'm totally forgiven. I have freedom in Christ. What that means is that every day, as we talked about last week, we can get up, we can come to the Father, we can pray, we can confess our sin, and he forgives us totally. And those sins... No matter what, as we come in the blood of Jesus, we come, 1 John 1, 9, it says this, we confess, and he is faithful and will forgive us of all of our sins. And then we can walk forward, Christ in you, Christ in me, we can walk forward that day in Christ, going forward with a heart that's focused on God and his word. In other words, we focus on God and his word, and we go forward. Now, what is that? In a sense, what it means is that God understands how terrible things are. He understands in his, 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 his uh, sovereignty what's going on. He knows that we're going to be dealing with all kinds of issues. But what does he do? What does he say? He says, trust me. Trust me. Trust me. Trust me. He says, don't let all of those things that you see distract you from trusting me. Whatever you feel, whatever you have to go through, trust me. And blessed is the man who trusts the Lord in everything. That's what we need to be. And the way, the, the mechanism by which God gives us this ability to connect with him is the word of God, the vertical truth. 
He said, blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of wicked or stand away of sinners or sit in the seat of mockers, but he, he delights in the word of God and in, in the law of the Lord. He delights in it. It's like a man. He, God blesses him. Now, what does this mean? It, it says also further in another place we hear, he blesses us no matter whether there's, um, there's the crops are there or whether you're making an income or you have a job. Even though you may be going through really difficult times, he's still blessing you because you know he's with you. He's always with you. He never leaves you or forsakes you. So today, we're going to read these scriptures, and I want to talk about them, but I want you to, to think about we're on vertical truth in a horizontal nightmare that we're dealing with, all this horizontal spiritual darkness that's going on in our nation. And we'll talk about that a little more specifically in a minute. But first, I want to focus on what we need to focus on, because this is exactly what it means for us to be able to deal with, for us to deal with this horizontal mess that's going on, for us to be light and salt in the darkness that we're in, for us to focus on horizontal truth, for us to be able to hunker down on the rock of our salvation. What we need to do is hear the word of God. So I'm going to try to share the screen here with you a moment here and pull something up and see which one this is. Here it is. See if you can see that. I hope you can see that. And um, let's go from here. Let's see what we can do here. Okay, let's see. Okay, it says you are screening. I can see that. Can you guys see that? Thumbs up, somebody. Okay, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Colossians 3, 1 through 17 says the following. It says, since then, you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. That is the focus of your mind. Each day, all day long, in the middle of all the things, that are going on, that is what you want to do. Focus on the fact that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. He rose from the dead. He's now at the right hand of the Father. He's your advocate, as it says in the eighth chapter of Romans. He's there when you pray into the throne room of mercy and grace. You have access through him. He's the great high priest in the order of Melchizedek. He is the one who allows you to go to Abba, Daddy, your father, in the throne room of mercy and grace so that you can come at any time of the day or night, no matter what, and you can come right in there and ask God to bless you or to help somebody else. Did you know one of the blessings that you have, which I'm going to teach on later, but we'll talk about it, is that because you're a Christian, and, and it's Christ in you, the hope of glory, did you know that now you have, a, you have the ability through Christ to go right to God where such mercy and grace is available, and you can pray for other people? Did you know that as a ministry? That when you're off so rattled and so freaked out about your life that you're not listening and you're not being around other people and you're not, so you run off, I, people call me, oh, Don, you got to pray, you got to pray, because I know you pray. I'm saying, well, why don't you pray? They get up, they're sort of mad at me because then they think that's my personality, you know. I'm, I'm sort of saying, well, you know, you do it. That they, they think for some reason certain people can pray and everything. And I agree that, that the more that you study the word and the more you you're with Christ, you know, that, that you're there. But the point is, if you're a Christian and you know Christ, he's available to you all day, every day, every moment, because Jesus is there at the right hand of the Father. So that's why we focus. That's why we pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances. How could you do that? How could you be joyful? Because I know that I have access to the throne of mercy and grace every day, all day. I don't have to do anything. I don't have to pay any money. I don't have to do anything. All I have to do is believe and trust in Christ. And I'm, I'm in. And all the power of the universe and all the power is given to us in Christ. So we have a problem in our country. What's the answer? Let's pray. We have a problem with our own personal, the way we do things. We drink too much. We watch things we shouldn't watch. We seem to be in arguments and fights with our wife or our kids. What do we do? What's the problem? Go right to Jesus. Go right to the throne room and start praying and confess your sins and go and just lay it out and say, Lord, I got a real problem here. You know, I'm doing this. This is, I know this isn't right, but I, I've got a real problem with that. And you just lay it out. Or you got a friend of yours that needs prayer because something, I just got a call from a, two days ago, a wonderful friend that has cancer. And it's really not something good. I mean, it's really a problem. And, and the first thing I did was pray. And the first thing I told him was, thank you, because I know, and I'm explaining to him about what it means to be in Christ, that I have access, and you have access. And now we trust Jesus, his death and resurrection, and now we can come 
So let's say it again. Let's read it. Seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds, that's what you're thinking. Remember how you think. God says in, uh, what is it, Psalm 19, 14, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. That's exactly, I pray that every day. When I drive into under my, I have a parking space under the building, I drive in, I turn off the key. The first thing I say is, Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Then I say, let, let me be a blessing to others today, Lord, I pray in Christ Jesus' name. And Lord, bless and prosper me today, I pray in Christ Jesus' name. Before I open the door to get out of the car, because I'm constantly knowing that I have access to the throne room of mercy and grace. And that if I go to work that day and everything goes wrong, I, all my deals blow up. Well, that, <laughs> I don't have deals to blow up anymore. I used to have deals to blow up. Now, Gene always says, oh, I pray for Don and all these deals to come together. I said, Gene, let's pray that I have some deals that can blow up, okay? <laughs> that would be even, even better than no deals, right? I used, to, I used to have deals and be worried about them all the time. When you don't have any deals, you don't have to worry about them. It's amazing. But the point is this, listen, over the years, I used to pray about deals all the time. You know, when I had them, I had a lot of deals, thousands of deals. And I prayed and I put them before the Lord. But you know what the Lord was teaching me one day? And I started reading this because we're going to read it in a couple moments. That when you focus on the deals, you focus on the money that comes from the deals. And guess who your hope is in? But one of, one of those, I had one down, I had a million in, coming in on that. And Nancy and I were going to pay off this and do that. And the, and the deal was impossible for the deal to blow. That They had released 460000 non-refundable through the seller. And they got to the city, got all the approvals. Everything was fine. It was going to close. And we were already spending the commission, right? And we and it was not some silly game that you guys play. Well, I wouldn't be a salesman there, you know. I'm going to work. But, you know, listen, bless me. We work. That deal like took five or six years. So anyway, the deal blew up, right? What was I thinking about? Was I thinking about God or the deal? Which, who, who was my idol? Who was I? I was sitting in there praying and praying for my deals. What was I thinking about? Was I thinking about Christ at the right hand of the Father? Or was I thinking about doing everything I could to help everybody get along as a good Christian? And I prayed about it. And I did all the things that I'm with my family and everything. But what was I focused on? I was focused on the deal. Or in my case, which was cool, a lot of deals. And then when one deal would go down, you know what I'd say? You know what I'd say? Oh, that's okay. Praise the Lord. I'm working. He's given me all these other deals. And I'll trust and work that way. Now, what am I thinking about then? The other deals. By the grace of God, I had them. But what was I always thinking about? Deals. Horizontal stuff. Guess what he did? No more deals. Let's focus on Jesus. So that when you speak, so that you can take the First Love Ministries ministry a little further down the road, Don, because now what we need you to do is focus on the message. Oh, what's the message? Christ in you, the hope of glory. When you go to work, when you're with your, let's, let's not do the work thing right now. We did that last week. Let's do the family thing. This is one you're really, this is really going to hurt you, okay? <laughs> I'm going to hit you right where you live. When you're with your kids, now my kids are in their 40s. And they've been around a little. Beat up, back, beat up. They've already, sort of everything I had, I've already given and done everything I can to save them. So they squeezed me, they got me. So here we are. What's going to happen now? Now you're talking to your kids. Did they see Christ in you, the hope of glory? Or do you see they see you all angry, frustrated, you know, what are you doing that for? Or, you know, could you be so stupid? Don't you know anything? Why aren't you reading your Bible? Why aren't you going to this? Why aren't you doing that? What do they see in you? Do they see Christ in you, the hope of glory? Or did they see an angry, an angry God ready to pounce on them? Ha, we have those conversations. We really do. You know, when you want to pray for them or pray with them, they, I don't need that, you know, and they do, and they know they do, and then we, they come to me, and we, we do pray and all that, but are, are they seeing that you're focused on Christ, or are they seeing that you're focused on the circumstances of life, and a lot of times, you're focused on what? 
their circumstances and you don't like their circumstances because you don't like the decisions they made that created the mess that they're in. Oh, you forgot about when you were 25 or 35 or 45, you forgot about all the messes you got yourself into and how God had to get you out of those. Now, I got to tell you, some people, I don't know how to explain it, but why don't we just let the word of God say it? We're going we're gonna to go through this. And everything I've talked about just now, Paul's going to explain the complexity of living in everyday life relating to this concept and this desire to have Christ in you, the hope of glory. So let's go a little bit further here. Let's see where we were. For you died. Here we go. Set your minds on things above, on, not on earthly things. Now, now I wanna, I'm going to say it. I don't want to stay on that forever, but not on earthly things. Let's say it again. Not on earthly things. The horizontal, this storm of, you know what, I don't want to say the word on, in the group. It's going, man. Everybody called, that's a storm. Yep, that's it, man. That's life. And it's getting worse. For you died. Uh-oh. Whoops. What? What do you mean? What do you mean I died? You, that person who's all freaked out about that horizontal storm, that person died. And if you haven't died, then you're not alive in Christ. So you got to understand, where are you? where is your focus? Where's your God? What are your idols? Now look at it. It says, for you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. Are you hidden in Christ with God? Christ in you, the hope of glory? When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Did you know glory is when you're out of the horizontal mess and you're vertically and you're with Christ for eternity. Where are you going to be in 10,000 years? You ever thought about that? Where are you going to be in 10,000 years? Now, a lot of you guys heard me say this. There are people who are going to watch this message who have never heard me say it, and I want you to hear it as clearly as possible. Where are you going to be in 10,000 years? And when you get through thinking about that, where's your children going to be, and where are your grandchildren going to be? And where is your friend going to be? The friend who just I just found out about the cancer, where is he going to be? First thing I talked to him about, he's a friend of mine. And, and he's not of, quote, unquote, our persuasion. I don't want to get too detailed. I don't want anybody to figure this out. But I, I talked to him. It's very private. I talked to him. I said, this is about the Messiah, Jesus Christ. And whether you have Jesus or you don't have Jesus, everything is about Jesus Christ. And I'm praying for you because I have access to the throne room of mercy and grace. That's the person they want praying for them, the one who knows that they have access. The one who is in, in faith, confident faith, the faith that is given by God, faith that looks to God for everything. Not confused, not worried about his assets, not worried about his business or this or that and the other thing, but knowing it's where you're going to be in 10,000 years. It's a sobering thought. And it's one that we have to think about. It's what It's a kind of a thought that brings the true fear of the Lord into people. Do I really want to be with Christ in heaven, or am I just going to let this thing roll out? I'll take my chances and go to hell in a hat basket or, or wherever it is, and they'll say, I don't believe in hell. Do you think not believing in hell has anything to do with where you're going to be in 10,000 years? Are you anybody stupid enough to believe that just because you don't, you say you don't believe in something, that means it doesn't exist? That is dumb. That's double dumb, okay? And in the Bible calls being a fool, because a fool said in his heart, there is no God. And if there's no God, there's no judgment. If there's no judgment, there's no hell. That's a fool. A fool says there's no hell. There's no punishment for your sin. And God says, be wise, gain understanding. And where do you, and where's the Bible tell you where you get wisdom and understanding? It's all found in Jesus Christ. Christ in you, the hope of glory. I know where I'm going to be. I'm going to be with Jesus in 10,000 years. And I hope you're there with me. So let's go on. He says this, when Christ, who is your life, appears, you also will appear with him in glory. Now, here we go. So what do we do? We belong to Christ. What do we think about? Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature. Now, listen carefully. Sexual immorality. That means 
homosexuality, transgenderism, going out and having affairs, sleeping with be anyone who's not your husband or your wife or anybody else's husband or wife. It means all of the above, plus watching it on TV, going in there and getting involved with it in any way, shape, or form. Impurity. Now, if you don't like that, let's go to impurity. Impurity, what is, that is like all over the place. Impurity. Lust. I don't need to explain to you what lust is. I think you probably figured that out. Evil desires and greed. Now listen to this, evil desires. Now look at and greed. I want you to look at the word greed because this has to do with the love of money. This has to do with people working themselves to death, to the bone. Greed, what is it? Which is idolatry. You say, I don't have any idols. I don't have any things like this. God says, what is, what did, uh, at the end of 1 John, I'll give you a little secret. At the end of 1 John, and 1 John is spoke, 1 John is written to, to Christians, just to Christians. 1 John, at the very end, what's the last verse say? My beloved, stay away from what? Idols. You say, I'm an idol, Jesus Christ. I wouldn't, I'm not going to bow down to this. Listen carefully. When, they, when, the, um, when the seed, remember when Jesus told the story about the word of God and went out upon all the different uh, types of soil? What was the soil he described where the seed went and it started to grow really well? And then what happened? The weeds came up and grew at the same time, right, with the seed? And it kept the seed from producing fruit, okay? It grew, it was alive, but it couldn't, couldn't produce fruit. Why couldn't it? What did Jesus say? What was the reason? It's because of their desire and their fear and desire for earthly things, for money. They just got, you know, there was a conflict between Christianity and making money. Now look what it says here. It's like they, didn't, they, they don't want to give. They don't want to do what God said and be joyful givers because they got to hold it. They, it's for themselves. It's for their family. Oh, my gosh, for my children. Someday I have to write a checker. I'm going to leave money to this. How about all the money that's been left to Harvard, Yale, Princeton? All those wonderful people from years past that were Christians, when they all started and they put all these assets and everything. These people, you know, they have more money. They have no idea. They could never charge. They have so much money all those places that put away that they would never have to charge anything for anybody to go there. And yet they want more money from the government. And what do they teach? You think any of them teach this, Christ in you, the hope of glory? Think about it. So here it is. Let's read that verse again. This is, this is a cutting verse. This is the fear of the Lord jumping right on top of me and you. Evil desires and greed, which is idolatry, because of these, now listen carefully, this is called the fear of the Lord, to listen to this. Because of these, the wrath of God is coming. What? The wrath of God? What? Come on, now, we're, this is a nice Christian program. Let's just get along, go along, and let's not send, people won't come back. Nobody's going to watch your, your messages, Don, and, and your, your giving to the First Love Ministries USA. You know, you, you, you want people to hook on with you. They're not... I mean, you can't be, you can't talk like this. Because of these, the wrath of God is coming. Who do you think we should tell that to? Anybody we care for, anybody we love, right? Oh, I couldn't possibly tell that to anybody. I could, I would never, oh, I'll tell them, I'll bring them to your Bible study, Don, and you can tell them. I mean, I'm, I like to go to Bible studies when I leave. I've had this said to me if once a hundred times. Well, I came, I love the Bible study and everything, but Don, you know, I don't like going away from a Bible study where I don't feel, you know, good about myself. I like going to Bible study where I feel, when I leave, I feel good about myself. If you want to feel good about yourself, just you and the devil go out and have dinner. He'll kiss your, you know, he'll, he'll, he'll take care of everything. He'll pay for it. No, when you want to be with Christ, you give everything, you die, you die, and then you give everything and you sacrifice. That's what it means to be with Christ. Not as much fun as it is when you're off there just skipping along whatever the evil one wants you to do. So let's read it again. Because of these, the wrath of God is coming. You used to walk in these ways. We all do. We all did. In the life you once lived. But now... You must also rid yourselves of all such things as these. 
you know, now he starts really getting it. I don't know why he does this, but he's causing us a little more trouble here. He says, anger. Anybody here really good at getting angry? A lot of you guys have been angry guys, and I've talked to you over the years, and you've sort of back, I've, I've explained to you how anger is a sin. Rage? I mean, anger is not enough. Rage? All these people are out there raging and going weird on TV. I mean, what's going on in the United States of America? A bunch of people like us don't have the guts to say, stop, this is not right, and we'll go in and we'll stop it because it's wrong. Because if you don't stop it now, and I don't care how unpopular it is, if you don't stop it now, it's just going to grow and grow and grow. And pretty soon, the United States of America, we've lost it, totally lost it. And we have all these people up there that are, quote, unquote, reasonable people. We have a bunch of people who we have Republicans and Democrats, and, the, and a lot of Democrats say they're Christians, and a lot of Republicans say they're Christians, and they're not standing up and saying, enough is enough, stop, and they, they won't take on the responsibility of stopping it, and they won't stop abortion, and they won't stop all the things that lead to this, and they say, they call on Christ. Jesus says that all who call on me are not necessarily mine. He separates the goats from the sheep. And I'm telling you, the United States of America is this gigantic place where everybody thinks it's a Christian nation, remember? And 80% of the people believe in God and all these other things and everything. I'm serious. There's no such thing as a Christian nation. There's only Christian people, one at a time, not a Christian family, just an individual. Nobody goes to heaven because their grandmother was a Christian or because they grew up in the United States of America versus growing up in uh, Pakistan. In other words, we are in Christ because we are in Christ, Christ in you, the hope of glory. We, we don't worship the United States of America. We don't worship the dollar. We don't worship our job. We don't worship our wife. We don't worship our grandchildren. We worship Jesus Christ and Christ alone, the hope of glory. So let's read it again. Because of these, the wrath of God is coming. You used to walk in these ways in the life you once lived, but now you must also rid yourselves of all such things as these, anger, rage, malice, slander, filthy language from your lips. Do not lie to each other, since you have taken off your old self with its practices and have put on the new self. Have you put on the new self? Are you still walking around the stinky old self? That's why you need to take a shower, a spiritual shower, every morning. Now, my mom taught me when a little boy, every morning you take a shower. Oh, no, no, I'm not dirty. I do not. And every morning you take a shower. Why? Because I told you so. Because I want you to be my, my son. You're going to be a clean boy. And someday you'll be a clean man. And you will do that. And so every morning I pray. I pour my heart out to the Lord. And, I, and I, I'm, no, I'm no better than I was before, but I'm, I'm just who I am before Christ. And he takes everything and he cleans me. And I start off and I walk out the door clean and ready to go. And then all, you know what, hell breaks loose. And I'm in the horizontal and I'm in the storm. And then I got to come home and during the day I got to pray. I got to do the, if you're driving, if, if some of you guys that used to be runners or you ride your bike and you're riding your bike, you're running and a, and a, let's say you had your sunglasses on and a, and somehow a bug hits your sunglasses and splats on your, on your eye. Well, that's like me going around. And what do you do? Do you leave it on there or do you wipe it off? So I'm going out living my life and some sin of mine splats on my face or something. What do I do? It comes into my heart. What do I do? Just leave it there? No, I pray. I just say, God, how could I? I didn't, I didn't want to. I don't want to say that. I'm thinking that, but I don't want to think that. I'm doing that, but I don't want to do that. Have a conversation with God all the time. Because it's Christ in you, the hope of glory. He's in there. So let's go on. Do not lie to each other since you have taken off the old self with its practices and put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge in the image of its creator. Renewed in knowledge in the image of its creator. Who created all things? Jesus Christ for his purpose. And have, verse 10, and have put on the new self which is being renewed in knowledge in the image of his creator. What does it mean? And now listen carefully. This is cool. In knowledge 
in the image of his creator. That means the more you learn about who Jesus Christ is, the more you study Jesus Christ, the more you will be able to take off the old self and put on the new self. Here, there is no Gentile or Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave or free, but Christ is all and is in all. We're going to stop here, but I got to tell you something. <laughs> we're not stopping. We're just beginning. Now, you have to think about this for a minute as we close. Knowledge. Knowledge of Christ. So homework. This is a homework. <laughs> I don't like homework. I don't. I, I, my whole thing is about, you know, I'm not a homework person, but I got to give you this one. I want you to read and study for next week. Colossians chapter one, just read Colossians chapter one and read it over eight or 10 times. Because I want you to know, because I'm gonna be referring to it a lot, we'll be talking about it, because we're gonna talk about knowledge of who Christ is, your creator. And then, I, and, the, and then you might as well read the second chapter of Colossians where it talks about, see to it that no one takes you captive through hollow and deceptive philosophies which depend on human tradition and the basic principles of this world rather than on Christ. For in Christ, all the fullness of deity lives in bodily form, and you have been given fullness in Christ, and he is the head over every power and authority. Did you get that one? It's Colossians 2, 8 and 10. See to it that no one takes you captive through hollow and deceptive philosophies which depend on human tradition and the basic principles of this world rather than on Christ. For in Christ, all the fullness of deity lives in bodily form, and you have been given fullness in Christ, who is the, the head over every power and authority. It is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Now go out and walk with him. Talk with him. Confess to him. Say, hey, this is really cool. I, you're right there at the right hand of the Father, you and the Father are one, and I'm allowed to speak to you, and when something happens, and I watch and somebody's in trouble, or a friend, have, I can bring you, I can bring them right to you, I can pray for them, and you know, some of you guys have been around me a long time, so you've seen this sort of develop, you know, and I'm not cool, but it just happens, that you've seen how God has worked in my life over the years, I mean, now I have a that's what's going to happen to you. I've got 35 years plus. It's really 40 years. I keep I don't I don't like to say more than 35. I get it sounds old. But anyway, this period of time where I've been walking and serving people and, and being in the ministry at some level, I've I've had my problems going off on the, you know, but some level all the way. And God's brought me to this point. And you know that when we're there with those people, you and I, you've brought people to me, you've sent me stuff, and you know when we pray. You know, you know God's doing. You know he's working. You know he's entering. You know from eternity past he planned to have us pray, and he's got it all dialed in for these people. And we, we are seeing things all the time. I, I prayed for Gene's back every single day for him to be able to play tennis. Every day, not because tennis is a big deal for him. Uh, it is a big deal, but not because, not because of this, not because of that, because he and I are brothers in Christ, and that's what I do. And just how long ago, I don't know, Gene, you can't speak, but how long ago you had that neck surgery? And I remember, because I had neck problems too, and I remember Gene telling me, well, I don't know, this is pretty serious. And the guy says he wants to go in there and do this and do that. And I remember going in that hospital and looking at him, and he and I talked for a couple minutes. And you know what we talked about? He knew that it could go bad. He knew it could go good. He thought it would go good. You know what we talked about? He knew I was there for one reason, and that was to bring this surgery and him before the throne of a mercy and grace, period. Because we knew God was listening. We knew God was listening. And because God was, we knew God, because we knew that's the faith, then we knew in the power of the Holy Spirit that what we were doing was meaningful and important. So the next time when he came in and told me he wasn't dying or something, he was all infected, we had that too. 
We didn't have a problem. We didn't have to explain to each other what's going on. We knew what's going on. And when I went to the, when I was in the hospital and all these things happened to me and which they're happening and going on now with this, this stuff. When I was there all by myself in the middle of the night and I was praying, it was Christ in me, the hope of glory. And I was so thankful. I said, Lord, I don't feel anything, but if I'm coming, now's as good a time as any. And I, I, I got to tell you, it was just, I just knew I belonged to God. Do you know that you belong to God? Is it Christ in you, the hope of glory? Or are you confused? So for the people who are watching this who are not part of our normal group down the road, this would be somebody could be watching this 20 years from today. But here it is. Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. He took all of your sin upon himself. He became your sin. He took the wrath of the Father, and he died. And then he walked out of the grave on the third day, and he defeated the power of sin and death in our lives. He rose from the dead, making us born again, children of the living God, all those who call upon his name. And when we call, it says in the Bible, as Lord, L-O-R-D, all capital letters, and Savior. Many people want him just for the fire insurance, okay? That's not what it's about. He's your Lord. That means you turn your life, just what we said here, you turn your life over to him, and you follow him into eternity. I love you guys. Lord, thank you for the message. We love you. Thank you for letting us be together today. Please bless us here at First Love Ministries USA. You know, we need help. We've got a lot of things going on all over the world, Lord, and we pray and trust you for everything. We love you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. So I'll leave this with you. Where are you going to be in 10,000 years? The answer is, it's Christ in me, the hope of glory, man. I'm going for Christ and the glory. Thanks, guys.